gathered in your holy name. We ask as we unveil your word, you speak to every heart in this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, open your word in such a way that will reach deep down into our soul. For those in the live audience and those watching online. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please, you can have your seats. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope you're well. Amen. 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 I know it's a bit warm in the auditorium. The temperature has risen and we're just going to be able to deal with that before next week's Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just to let you know ahead of time, midweek service, um, this Wednesday is going to take a different turn at Bible study. We're going to have foundation class for the next six weeks. So it's going to be very effective just taking each subject and teaching one at a time. Well, today we're going to continue in our teaching. So let me just say this just ahead of time. Um, all of you that did not attend the first, second, and third service, I understand you didn't. But I would really want to go back, maybe watch second or third service. Maybe really watch second or third service. I want to go back and watch second or third service. Um, it's, it's a game changer when it comes to relationship. The really, the, you can start from last Sunday. The messages are on YouTube, and it will change everything. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But this service, it's going to be so, so powerful. You know, I really thought that... You know, when I was preparing for this, like the Spirit of God really, like, was challenging me to take it to a new level. Let's say to, to take the, to a new level. So that's what I'm going to do with this teaching. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Psalm 147. We prayed from a scripture in the third and fourth service. Let me share with you. We will not pray from it. Just let me just share with you. We did a scripture from Thanksgiving from Psalm 124. Psalm 124 verse 1. I want to read it quickly. I always love to give you just so that no services is better than the other. Psalm 124. Let's read it quickly. want to go. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Let's read together. Now may Israel say. Verse 2. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men what? rose against us. Verse 3, they will have swallowed us quick, then their wrath was kindled against us. Verse 4, verse 4 please, then the waters will have overwhelmed us and the stream will have gone over the, our soul. Verse 5, then the proud waters will have gone over our soul. Verse 6, hold on, you didn't say that way, you didn't say with a loud voice, want to go, blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. That is so powerful. That is so powerful. He said, if men were God, where will he be? If men had the power to do what they could do against you, if authorities and sitting bodies could do that, he said, blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. This is very instructive. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Very powerful. Hallelujah. So that, that, that's very powerful. That's very powerful for everyone here. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. There's another scripture we read. So that scripture made us burst into thanksgiving, saying, Lord, Lord, thank you for not giving us as a prey to their teeth. The second scripture we read was Mark chapter 9, verse 20. 23, 21 to 23, Mark 9, 20, 21, 23, from the message translation. You know it from the King James translation, but I was opportune to, you know, to get to see the message translation. This was the case where a, a man brought a child that was deaf and dumb to Jesus Christ and asked just to heal him. The Bible says, Jesus Christ asked the boy's father, how long has this sickness been going on? And the boy's father said, ever since he was a little child or boy, many times the sickness will pitch him into the fire or the rivers to do away with him. But he says, if he can do anything, I, I, the boy's father did not know who Jesus Christ was. So he was saying, if, you know, it was, that's ridiculous. How can you talk to Jesus Christ and say, if? But maybe you're here, maybe because of all the things you're bringing through, you say, Lord, if you can help me. He says, if he can do anything, he said, do it. Then he says something, he say, have a heart and help us. Then when he said so, 
Jesus Christ could have said, um, you know, I'm not sure if this can happen. I'm not sure this can work. You know what Jesus Christ said? Jesus looked at him with prophetic eyes and said this word, verse 23. I want us to read it together. Are you ready? One to go. And Jesus said, Hold on, you didn't really well. Jesus said, If there are no ifs amongst believers, anything can happen. Nobody spoke like Jesus. Who? Jesus said, If there are no ifs amongst believers, anything can happen. And I don't know if the son has given up on the rest of the year. I don't know if there's someone that is depressed. There are no ifs amongst believers. Anything can happen. Oh, praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we used that to pray earlier on, and you can just use to pray. Next level prayers continue tomorrow. Join us there. Psalm 147 in verse 3. So I want to talk about fixing emotional wounds, and we really want to deal with that today. I want to talk about, so this month we're talking about relationships and marriages in church. And I want to talk about how emotions deal with relationships and marriages. It's going to really help a lot. I hope you can join me to do this together. Psalm 147 in verse 3. The Bible says that he healed the brokenhearted and binded up their wounds. So question, there's a connection between being brokenhearted and having wounds. I wanted to see that. Because how can you be brokenhearted and it's healing your wounds? Definitely, those wounds are no wounds in the flesh. Those wounds are wounds within the soul. So he says, one of the things that God does is this. He heals the broken in heart and it binds up their wound. What happens when people have broken in heart? Psalm, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15, verse 13, and Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. I'm going to lay a foundation and teach on this. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13. See what the Bible says. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but watch this now, but by sorrow of heart is the spirit broken. So there's a deep connection between a broken spirit and sorrow of heart. That's one. I'm just packing the scriptures to you. The next scripture, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs 17, just two chapters afterwards. Proverbs 17, verse 22. The Bible says this. Watch what it says. A merry heart do what like medicine, but a broken heart dryeth up the bones. He says that if a merry heart is like medicine, then a broken heart is like poison. So this is why you don't want yourself to carry emotional wounds. This is why you don't want yourself to be depressed because that depression is going to be like poison. The same way medicine repairs your system, he says if you carry depression and you carry emotional wounds, it will break down your system. Very instructive. Very, very instructive. Very, very instructive. And you know, yesterday I was speaking in, I was preaching in Enugu and um, you know, my, my system was there with me. And I was, you know, do I give illustrations? So I called this guy to give an illustration. It was a music director in the church. I called him and I said, that, Hey, what are you believing God for? And I was telling him, I'll write a letter of congratulation. And he said, Well, he's believing God for financial breakthrough. And that was it. And I just felt in my heart to give him some money. So I just told him that, You know what? I'm, you're believing God for this, but there's a reason why I asked you, and I'm giving this amount of money. And it fell on his knees and started crying. And as, I, as soon as I said that, about 10 people just felt the same thing to give him an amount of money. They just began to come to me and say, I wish you give him money. And he came up and said, Pastor, you don't realize something. On Tuesday, I became suicidal. He said, all we had, myself and my husband, myself and my wife and children was 600 naira. He said, became suicidal. And I'm saying so to you, and, and he said, became suicidal. But it's not the focus. It's the focus that how does someone that comes to church lead us in praise and worship? become suicidal because people can dress well and be broken in their hearts that's what I'm going to so all of you that are here with nice makeups and you brought nice cars I wish they to trip me they don't trip me because I'm able to see into your soul and see I'm asking myself what is the condition of your soul and the Bible says a merry heart do it like medicine he says 
if your heart is merry, if you're in a state of joy, he says, even it's, it's going to be as if you're on, on drugs. You're going to be full of life and excitement. Your organs are going to feel it. But if you have a broken spirit, it will dry out your bones. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Wow. How did I learn about emotional state? And this will tell you something. When my father died, when my father died, my father died quite a while ago, so it's not a recent story. I used to come to the office, but I found out some, these are learned about emotions, not just about emotions. I learned that I would sit down in the office and I would not be able to walk. Who knows what I'm talking about? Have you experienced that before? I would just stand in the office. I would get to the office on the table, and I would not be. I would just feel like maybe I should watch a movie. I should just just lay around. I was not able to work. And what was happening to me was that I was entering a negative emotional state. That was the first time I understood the power of emotions. Where's my touch light? You don't have it. I don't know why you keep keeping them at the back. I want to show you what emotions are like. Let me know what emotions are like. This touch light, I'm sure, yeah, this touch light is part by battery. If there are no batteries in this touch light, this touch light will not work. If the batteries are weak, it will be dimmer. That's emotion. Emotion is energy. That's what I'm going to. Emotion is energy. This touch light by itself can work, but it needs Power to power it. What your emotions are are like energy. When the difference between performance is emotions. When in a better state, you perform better. I'll give an example. I'll give an example. Have something happened to you before, and you say to your neighbor that like, you are lucky I'm in a happy mood. Why? Because if you were in, because on a normal day. If you were in a worse emotional state, you will have outrage. You only perform better because you were in a what? Better emotional state. If you were in a worse emotional state, you will perform what? Worse. Let me ask you something. I see your caught to you before that you could not spell water. Oh, come on. You could not spell T-H-E-D. When you were in that state, what happened? Is it that you didn't know it? You knew it. But when something goes wrong with your emotion, and this will happen to you in school, when you're in a negative, once fear enters your heart and you enter examination, what will happen? Even the things you know, you'll forget. Why am I saying this to you? Emotions are like battery. If the battery of the touch light is weak, the light will be weak. If the battery is dead, the touch light will be dead. You will never get the touch light to perform because it can perform. The touch light depends on the battery to perform. So why am I saying this? You will never find yourself being able to act the way you should act because your emotions are not right. So if your emotions are dead, you will not be able to act right in a relationship. If your emotions are low, you will act low in a relationship. If your emotions are high, you will find yourself acting high in a relationship. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Have you ever seen a car that the battery is low before? How does it start? Most of the... Then eventually, you have to jump start it. If you have to jump start it, they have to push it. So when your emotions are low, some of you will need push to do what you should be doing. So what makes emotions low? Because of emotional wounds. Emotional wounds keeps draining you. Glory to God. Let me show you four effects of low emotional states. Number one, when in a low emotional state, you will struggle to function. What does struggle to function mean? The things you should do normally, you will find it hard to do it. So normally, you should be able to love back and give back love and receive love. But why can't you love back and receive love? Because you are in a low emotional state. And let me tell you something. I was in a terrible state emotionally. I was born again, but I was emotionally deaf and dumb. 
I hope you know some people emotionally deaf and dumb. Have you met some of them before? Some people are never aware of what they feel. I'm telling the truth. They've learned all their life to suppress their emotions. So they are not, they are not aware of what they feel. They don't feel pain. Not they feel excitement. Where are they here? Are you here? You're like that, right? Oh, that's great. You don't know what you feel. You don't, you don't feel pain. You don't feel excitement. Who knows? Who has dated someone that is emotionally deaf and dumb? Yeah, I know. Give her the microphone. Tell me what your story is. Yeah, give her the microphone. Yeah. What was your experience? I just want to know what it looks like. Yeah. The reason, you know why I keep asking the, the lady, the, yeah, you, you, then you give to the, the reason why I keep, you can sit down. The reason why I keep asking is that when people share their story, then you can understand it better. Because this King James, you think it's in the Bible days, it's only happened. Yes, I'm listening to you. He can't, he can't share your joy, right? No. If I'm excited, it's like, oh, you're, you're soon going to cry or something. So, yeah. Wow, give the lady behind you. Yeah. I was experienced. This is when I was emotionally deaf and dumb. Um, there was no vim. There it was no was what? Fine. There was no vim. There was no vim. excitement. Yeah, there was no buzz. So, for example, I would cook his favorite meal. Or well, probably I'll say, okay, let's go out somewhere. Let's do something. And he was like, mm. no. I'm like, no, it's, you have to push yourself. I'm a very happy, bubbly person. So I have a certain kind of energy and love, and I'm trying to portray that to you, but you don't want to receive that. So it was just like, sometimes it made me feel like I was drowning as well, when I shouldn't be drowning. Why am I drowning? And, and most of them are not aware they're like that. Have you noticed? Exactly. You know, when you see people emotionally deaf and dumb, they're like, what's wrong with you? It, it, like, 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 they make you feel as if you're the problem, yes or no? Yes. And then at a point, I came and I was like, then I prayed about it. I spoke to my pastor and I said, am I the problem? Is there, am I doing something? Do I need to stop doing something? Then I thought, no. The, the reason why is that practically they are deaf and dumb. They can't receive signals. That's why I call them emotionally deaf and dumb. They can't receive signals. So imagine shouting, so imagine shouting at someone that is deaf and dumb. So emotionally, they are deaf and dumb. So, you know, you, and let me tell you something. I wish they were just men. There are also ladies like that, that, that way. Some are passionately deaf and dumb. Praise God. And you know the reason why. So why are people emotionally deaf and dumb? Because their emotions were really abused when they were very young. Or they silenced it. Or they were born in a place where they were never free to express their emotions. So they silenced it. For example, one of the things we do to men is that men should not cry. So men don't cry. They only commit suicide. Yeah, because as a man, you should suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. So what? Kill yourself, suck it up, and kill yourself. Glory to God. So when people are emotionally low, for example, if this such like the battery is low, it will struggle. So for example, here, if you are in this place and you struggle to forgive, and you struggle to love, and you struggle to receive love, most of the most of the time, your emotion is low, and this also can even affect your spiritual life. Sometimes when I struggle to pray, it's because I'm either spiritually low or I'm emotionally what low. Do you know when you're emotionally low, most of the time you struggle to even pray? Even though you like prayer. And the reason why is that once the battery of this touch light is low, although it should be shining light, you'll, be, you'll not be hitting it. What it should do naturally is to struggle to do it. So a lot of you here that are struggling, you need to be in touch with yourself and say, why am I struggling? Why am I struggling? When you see, why do I find it hard to move on from this relationship? Why do I find it hard to stay in this relationship? Maybe the reason why is that you're emotionally low. The second thing that happens when you're emotionally low is this. 
you begin to function at a limited capacity. So, if you don't struggle to function, you'll function at a limited capacity. Have you noticed when the battery of your phone is low, some functions cannot work again? So, all of a sudden, you notice that I can do this, but I can't do this again. And the reason why is that you're just emotionally low. But the question is, why am I emotionally low? I'm emotionally low because something over time is draining. Something over time is draining my emotions. Can I be honest with you? Some of you, you are a shadow of yourself because you're emotionally drained. That's the honest truth. I'm telling you, some of the people you think are very mean, if you go back to five or seven years ago, they were very, very... I mean, I met a friend of mine that I've known maybe about 20 years ago. I met her up recently, and she was very, very bitter. Very bitter, controlling, agitated, anxious. I stepped back, and I said... And I've not spoken to you in a long time. I said, what happened to you? He said, what happened to me? He said, what did my God happen to me? Nothing happened to me. I'm just the same. This is, this is. I, said, I said, that's the point. Why did it become like this? She had stayed in that state for so long. She'd never realized that she has changed. And I'm saying so because some of you, you have become limited. It's only the aggressive part of you that have grown. The feminine part of you have not grown. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can, we, can we talk? Can we really talk? Some ladies, you need to be more feminine. And the reason why is that because our world is harsh, when you get to work, it, it's men that causes it to, when you get to work, they demand you to be a man. So after being demanded to be a man for a long time, once you come outside of work, you don't know how to stop being a man and now turn to a woman. You come out and in your relationship, you still want to be a man. And this is what I say. Girls like that, they become too strong for someone to date them. And girls like that always marries a man that is like a woman. I'm not talking about your friend. Though. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they will think it's a man's fault. Meanwhile, you have become so strong as a lady, the only way to cope with you is to become a female. Or else there'll be fights. Glory to God. I said glory to God. This touch light, when the battery is apparently dead, what happens? It doesn't work again. There are some people that the reason why things are not working is because your emotions are permanently dead. And I wish it only affected your marriage, but it doesn't only. It affects everything. Even at work, you are not productive. In the office, you have a stench. There's, it just affects everything. Emotional words can develop into attachment styles. And I began to talk about that yesterday. There are two attachment styles I want to discuss for the rest of the teaching today. There's the first attachment style that I call the, um, ang the anxious attachment. And there's the other one called avoidment attachment. They, 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 and I want to say this way. The anxious attachment style are people that they've been, they were exposed to human connection, but in an epileptic way. So they were exposed to connection, the emotional needs met, but in an epileptic way. And because they've tasted it, they always run after it. They always run after it. They avoid that attachment style. They were never exposed to it. They were disappointed. So they don't expect anyone to have it. But two of them are insecure pattern of dealing with unmet emotional needs. So let me give you examples of what it is. Because I want to see what it is. So the first one. When people have anxious excitement state, they run towards relationship to seek connection and safety. Where are they? When people have an anxious attachment style, they run towards relationship to seek connection and safety. Number two, these people have had their needs met occasionally, and what they do is that they make a conscious effort to make sure they can find someone to meet their needs. Number three, these people look for their happiness in other people. Number four, they are desperate to have partners that meet their needs. So they always have partners that meet their needs, but also can abuse them. But they don't mind the abuse as far as their needs are met. Number five, they depend on romantic relationships to keep them happy. Number six, 
they get angry and overwhelmed the moment their partner is busy with life. Because, because I should be the only life you have. Number seven. Their constant aim in a relationship is to be the number one priority of their partner 24 7. Number eight, they are very scared of feeling lonely and bored in relationships. If you can identify, can you wave your hands? Let me see. Why are you lying? <laughs> you see everybody here? No, talk to me. So, why are you not talking? If you can identify, raise up your hands. Why are you raising up your hand for her? She's controlling. The reason why is I want someone to share, someone that was like this, Maybe you've discovered that you're working on it. I wanted to share. You want to share experience? Exactly. Please, yes. Yeah, please share your experience. That's great for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm speaking from a healed place. Honestly. Okay. Okay. This was what you were before. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I always wanted to be his everything, even when he didn't ask for it. Um, you know those things that you're both for that you go wash plates, clean the house. <laughs> I always wanted to be that person. I, want, I never wanted to see another girl. Never. Or best friend. Don't do that. You know, but... Even if it's a guy, don't have a... Blind. No, don't. Yeah. You know, but it's even hard that I'm talking about myself because I can't believe someone can be like that. But now I enjoy being by myself. I enjoy praying. I don't think there's so many things I can talk to a guy about that I talk up to God about. I'm so healed. It's... it's, it's it's a piece that makes no sense, I'm wow. telling you. <laughs> that, that's, that's great. That's great. Okay, who else wants to share? I'm, I'm waiting for more people to share. There's a lady over there. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Oh, who is there right now? Who is there right now? That's where you are. And it's worrying you. You are there right now. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. G give it to her to share. Then it's on us. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, I used to be that kind of girl. I always wanted to be around my man. And um, anytime he's having a life outside me that it doesn't even, it even include me, I always feel bad. I was scared of being alone. Why were you scared of being alone? Seriously, because... I never... I don't think I had that close relationship with my brothers. So I saw him like a I wanted to notice something very smart. What you're looking for is deep connection. And it's, you must know that that deep connection, maybe one person cannot provide that deep connection. It's for you to be able to develop so many roots because what will happen eventually is that you will drain the person, the person will see you are too demanding, and the person will move on. Did you experience that time in a relationship? Yes. What did he used to say? He used to say that um, I'm demanding something that he cannot give me. Oh, wow. And sometimes people say that as nonsense, but sometimes it can be true. Yeah, it was actually true because right now, at my stage right now, I think I actually demanded too much. And oh, looking back at yourself. Yes. You, you know you demanded too much. Yes. And What I, advice would you give your younger self? First, um, love yourself. Thank you. Most people that have the anxiety or the anxious attachment, you know what it is? They don't love themselves. They are looking for someone to love them. And you know why it's, you know, the more the person loves them, the more they want more. Because they don't love themselves. So it's like putting water in an ending ocean. And I'm saying so to you because a lot of you are here. Until you start loving yourself, you will not be able to... Listen, if you love yourself, you will know what it takes to love you. So when someone loves you, you will appreciate the effort in them loving you. Because you don't love yourself, you don't even know what love is. 
Praise God. Are you healed or you're there right now? Is that where you are right now? Somewhere. Who wants to share? Someone else wants to share? I want someone that is there right now. Someone that is there right now. Someone that is there right now. This guy, yeah, yeah. Wow. Finally, I got a guy. Yeah, this guy, yeah. Um, I discovered I can't really do without this particular person. And um, firstly, maybe because I was, like you spoke about this emotional draining, and I discovered I was paying her salary not to go to work. <laughs> like, in every month I was giving her like 50,000 naira. I wanted to just spend time with this person. I was, it was as if I, my, my whole, whole world that was around her, I want to see her every day. And I don't even know to some extent, and it was just so bad. Because this particular person, there was this time she told me, like, guy, this kind of thing, I don't think I can continue with this stuff. Because from the taking care of, um, I was taking care of her, putting her on the payroll, like every month I was giving like 50,000 Naira. Because I worked then, she was making like 35, 40,000 Naira. But I wanted to see her every day, so I placed her on the payroll. Then at this particular time, everything was just messed up. And thank God for my friend that helped me out, that guy. You know if they continue with this kind of thing. So what did your friend tell you? You, you put your hand on your head. So I'm uh, yeah, you know, these guys talk. They were like, guy, are you, are you sure you are okay? And they, thank God for the kind of friends I keep. They actually helped me The help. question is that, why, why do you think you were that way with that girl? And I would say to some extent, I would trace it because I was, I would trace it back to myself. Um, I don't think I had anybody to groom me. I was always on my own because I was the only child. Did you notice that? Most people that have this anxious attachment, they, when they were growing up, they found themselves alone. They tasted love and needs met in a certain way, but it was not consistent. So they began to chase it. Is that your kind of story, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, because I, I was just on my own and this particular girl came and I felt, okay, I can actually, the love I didn't get, this, this particular lady can They're actually They're always give me. looking for love. You know, and the reason I'm saying so that this applies to both men and applies to what women. But I want to ask you, when you are that way, you are clingy. It doesn't make the other person love you the more. It makes them run away from you because they actually feel there's something wrong with you. Yes, sir. Then guess what? Most of the time, people that have that attachment mentality are attracted to the opposite, which is the avoidant attachments. I'm going to come there in a minute. Okay, let me get one more person to share. Someone that is, I want someone that is going through it right now, right now. Not someone that has been healed. Someone that's going through it right now. So people are raising their hands for their friends. Let your friend raise up their hands themselves. You're going through it right now. You're going through it. Woo. This guy. Oh, fantastic. A lot of men are talking today. Give this guy. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So I, um... It's even less of relationships. It's really more just like life. So I discovered how I would always overgive in like most, um, you know, relational dynamics, friends, relationships, work as well, you know. You know this thing they say, the reward for good work is more work. I realized how it's very easy if I'm working with a group of people for them to just pass more things across. And this year, I just started to realize how that was faulty. I realized how, you know, obviously, so, people were taking advantage. So you, you, you tend to overgive a lot? Yeah. Why do you overgive a lot? Um, I don't know. I think I just know what it's like for people to not, um, you know, have certain things. How did you know that? What happened to you when you were young that made you know that? I mean, there's a lot of things, but one is I'm a middle child, and I think there's this special thing, which is like middle child neglect, right? Um, you're there, but you're kind of not there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, like, obviously because of that, I just found out that a lot of times, you know, in the midst of all the love that was around me, it still felt like I was in my own show, kind of away from it, right? And I didn't understand it when I was younger, but I started understanding it as I grew up. So and what this... have you done to improve right now? Yeah, thank you. So what I did was, one, I realized how with my job, um, 
like you said, at some point I wasn't functioning. I was trying my best. Things that I would do easily just wasn't working. I felt drained. Um, it took me like eight months because I kept debating with myself, should I leave, should I not leave? And I did that last month, right? I did that. Um, also, my relationship also left it, right? It took me a while, but I was like, I realized it wasn't working. I realized the dynamics weren't. I tried to fix it. I realized they weren't on the same page, and that's fine. We all have our journeys, so I was like, I had to leave. When people are in an in attachment, that this attachment zone, they will stay in an abusive relationship because they are afraid to leave. They would rather choose to be abused than to leave. And where do you, where, where do you fix this from? The first place you fix this from is by learning to love yourself. And let me say, look at, look at me, everybody. You don't have to be perfect to be loved. That's the truth. You don't have to be perfect to be loved. You don't have to be perfect to be loved. In fact, which of us is perfect? Praise God. I I'm trying to jump. I'm trying to, that, that's why I'm cutting you short because I'm, I'm trying to jump. I'm trying to jump. When people have this anxious um, attachment mentality, they have trouble vocalizing their own needs to their partners. Did you have trouble with that? Did you have trouble with that? Did you have trouble vocalizing your own needs? Yes. So something I noticed this year was the more I started speaking about how I felt, people were falling apart. So it was easier to see who my friends were and who they weren't because it's like once you address an issue, immediately, you know, yeah. you just get defensive. It's like, why are you saying this? You, you know what I'm saying? Right so some of you are in the marriages where you cannot express what you need. You are in relationship where you cannot, and you think it's your partner, but you yourself have not spoken. And the people in this attachment anxiety, they have a problem vocalizing what they need. They expect people to automatically discern what they need and do it for them. And they don't realize that it's an insecure emotional pattern. Praise God. So at one range is the people that have the anxious attachment at the other range is the avoidance what attachment. There are two opposite of a spectrum. Let me read to you some things about the avoidance attachment. Number one, these people run away from relationships to avoid connections and feeling safe. Where are they? Just raise up your hands if you're like that. You run away from relationship to avoid connection and feeling safe. Where are they? Raise, raise your hands. T tell me about it, my lady. Yeah, tell me. Okay, the thing is that once a guy is coming to me, like I don't get the signal, I feel like he's coming for something. Like I just need to be safe. I just need to go away from him. He does it to run away. Yes. Like I don't believe anybody. That's it. I don't believe anybody. Yeah. So, so who, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else on this side? Yes. Go ahead. Tell me. The microphone, please. Yeah, it's working, yeah. Yeah, so um, I had a very terrible breakup. And ever you since need to then, speak. You need to be more closer, yeah. I have yeah. a very terrible breakup. And ever since then, I, like, if I see anyone coming to me, even if it's on a platter of just friendship, I tend to just, like, tell you what you want. And if you tell me you want to be in a relationship with me, immediately I just tell you, no, I can't be. You can't be there. Why, why do you do that? I don't want to get attached to someone, and at the end of the day, they tell me they want to, like, they're not interested or they're not feeling... But I want to ask you something. Don't you hope to get another relationship? Um, right now, no. And that's not my question. My question is that in your future, do you hope to get another relationship, yes or no? Yes, I do. So if you don't allow somebody else, how will you get another relationship? I don't know. I feel like when the time is right, God is going to let me know. <laughs> Sister Mary, thank you. <laughs> you know, you know, the truth is this. You are just hiding behind God. You are just, you are just using God to hide. Yeah. Let me tell you the challenge with that. And please pay attention. 
you eventually want to get into a relationship, but age will have gone on your side. And the reason why is that you refuse to deal with a legitimate hurt that you're carrying that has turned you to an avoidant attachment. Attache, rather. Do you understand what I'm talking about, lady? Yes, sir. You do. So I think it's I think talking about it is a great thing to do. I think noticing is a great thing. Some people don't even notice it. It's a default. Okay, let's read about this avoidance. About, about avoidance. So the second thing is this. They really, oh wow. These people, when they were growing up, rarely had their needs met. And they created a pattern of not ex, of withdrawal and not expecting their needs to be met. This avoidant mental, uh, avoidant at a chase. They also have a feeling of being overwhelmed if they are responsible for meeting somebody's emotional need. So when someone else puts emotional needs on them, they just kind of like, mm, please, I'm sorry, I don't know what to say to you. And the reason why is that for them to meet your emotional need, they must come to an emotional level. It's not, it's not about you, they don't want to meet your need. It's the fact that they are afraid if they come to that emotional level, what will happen to them? So that guy you were dating, if he came to an emotional level, you'll be surprised it will break into pieces. So what he does is that this thing is big for me. You know, for example, I'll tell you something. Something I've not dealt with, it's funerals. So even though I'm a pastor, as much as possible, I avoid funerals. Because every time I go to a funeral, I end up crying, and they think I'm crying for them. But the truth is I'm crying for me. Because I remember the people I've lost that are kept somewhere in the corner of my heart. So when people have their violent attachment, they relate, they come to a level, they just relate to different distance. Okay, let's take some more. Let's take some more. These people, um, these people find it very hard to identify, express, or share their feelings because in previous times, when they had shared their feelings, they were disappointed. So they said, there's no point sharing my feelings. So let's close. I want us to close. I want us to close with this because I want to deal on the fixing now. How do you fix, if you have an emotional wound, how do you fix it? I want to read a scripture to you. Um, yeah, Genesis 27 verse 40. And this is where I will close. I have um, just three things to say and we'll close. Yeah. Genesis 27 verse 40. Let's read one to go. One to go. And by the sword shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass that when thou shalt have dominion, thou shalt break his yoke of what? Excellent. Something about emotional wounds is that it becomes a state gradually. It becomes someone who you are. It, becomes, it begins to define you. And without you knowing, you become resistant to change. Without you knowing, you become resistant to change. You just don't want, you just don't feel the need to change. You don't know why you should change. You just don't feel the need to change. So, see what the Bible says here. It says, it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion. Can you give me like the amplified version of the message translation of the verse? Quickly. This is how to break away from emotional wounds. This is how to break. The first thing you have to do is to find something that will push you. You need to find something that will push you. Will you give me the message translation? I don't understand. Uh, okay, yeah. This says the last line, and you need to go there. It says, and when you can't take it anymore, you will break loose. It, this is what it says. And when you can't take it anymore, you will break loose. That's what I'm going to. So how do you break away from emotional pattern? You need to get to a place. Uh, let me look for someone that I can, I can that is fragile. Who is fragile here in the choir? Yeah, come. Come. Any of them can come. Just bring someone that is fragile. Yeah, at least I know I can beat you, you know. So look at this lady now. Let's say we're fighting. It says, and, and when you can't take it, so if I keep pushing you, you keep, I keep pushing you, if I keep pushing you, you know what? 
the moment I push you to this edge, ah, when you know you will fall, you will bounce back. Your emotion, your emotions won't, will keep pushing you because you still have little way to go. Some of you right now have emotional issues. It doesn't bother you. The reason why is that there's no need to change. It doesn't affect your business. It doesn't affect your life. There's no need. But it's when you start hitting big age clock and you're single. You just say, mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I have a problem. I have a problem. It's when it threatens your business relationship that you say, okay, okay, I have a problem. So the writer, the, the, thank you. It says, it says, when it pushes you, it says you will break loose and run free. And that's why frustration is good. You know why? Frustration can turn into energy. That's why I'm telling you, that's why, that's why some break, breakups are very good. Some losses are very good. You know why? You will use the pain of the loss to become a better person. Is that not true? Yeah. How many of you have been better because of a loss or a breakup? Yeah. 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 Sometimes the best thing that can happen to you is a loss. Sometimes the best thing that comes to a breakup because the, the loss, the frustration will change you. In fact, someone said there's a formula for success. He said, fail first, then succeed after. He said, because it's failure that fuels success. That's why when you see people from poor background, they are hungry for success. People from rich homes, easy. They've been, they were born flying business class. But the one that had not entered plane, it will make sure you enter plane. When I enter plane, you say, why am I at the back? I want to sit in front. They say, yeah, no, you can't, I can't afford it. I will afford it. Glory to God. So how do you feel emotional mode? The first thing is this. You must develop, this, this is the thing, you must develop the push to make you fix it. How do you develop the push? I said this in the auto services. I said this. You must make it very painful for you to remain that way and make it very pleasurable to move to the next phase. You must make it very painful. Someone tell me here something you need to heal from, but you're not going to be a long person. You're going to go to heal. You are indifferent. You are indifferent. Anybody? Come on now. Thank you. There's, there's someone. There are people raising up their hand. Thank you. Anyone you want to heal from? There's a lady over here. Michael, come back. There's a lady over here. It's not like you want to heal from, but yeah. Or, or maybe you want to heal and you're not just you're not going to be a person for you. Um, for me, um, someone broke up with me some years back, and his reason was I looked too materialistic and too expensive to maintain. And ever since then, I had to tone down everything. Okay, but you've done something. I, I love that. You've done something. What I'm asking for is someone that there's something in your life that happened to you, and you need to make an adjustment, but you've not found yourself. You don't even have the energy. You're not very... I'm not part of making an adjustment. A anybody like that? Yes, there's a lady up front here too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hi. Yes. Okay. Just hold my microphone. Okay. I think I have abandonment issues. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 
I don't know how to move on from that because um, my mom left me, and I think my dad wasn't really there. And over time, so you don't show emotion. Not really. I always cover it with like jokes or something like. Whenever it's time to go really deep, I always find a way to like laugh about it or, you know, I don't know. So I don't know how to go about the abandonment issues, and I've noticed in my relationship too, they always leave me for someone else. Someone else. Right? So why do you want to? Why do you want to fix it? Uh, because I feel bad about it. Like sometimes I'm just like, what's wrong with me? Like my mom wasn't even there since I was like five months old. Am I so why bad? do you want to fix it? Because it's painful. Why is it? How painful is it? Very painful. Then why have you not fixed it? I don't know how to. You know why you've not fixed it? Why? Because it's not painful enough. <laughs> if it's painful enough, have you bought a book about it before? No. Ah, it's not painful enough. Wait. It's not painful enough. No. But you can buy clothes. Yeah. But <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? The reason why she's doing that is because her mind is still not made up. So let's fix this. And close here. Number one, how do you fix it? Number one, you need to ask yourself. Give her the microphone. Don't take it from her. What pain are you avoiding by fixing it? Sincerely, tell me. I feel like if I... You need to hold the microphone closer. Okay. Um, you feel as if you open up on this, it will break you down. Yes, a lot. And... Did you see that? So we don't fix things because we feel that there's a pain we're trying to avoid. So what pain is that? I'll probably have to accept it. I don't feel I'm ready to even go and talk to my mom, right? She's been trying to reach out, but I'm not even... You see the thing? She doesn't want to travel the journey. I told her there's a reason why she doesn't want to fix it. The reason why is this, because there's a pain. Every time you don't want to fix your emotional issue, there's a pain you have to confront you're avoiding. Why don't you want to talk to your mom? What did she do to you? How painful was it? Why would you leave your child at five months? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't understand it. What did you experience when you were five months? What did you experience growing up without your mom? Trust me, I was loved. They tried to make up for it because my dad wasn't even around. He was out of the country, so I what, grew up with my auntie. So what pain did you feel? What did you miss? Just not being able to live with your dad and your mom. There are a lot of things now. There are a lot of times I hear my friends like, oh, my mom, so I'm, I'm telling my mom about this. And so I, you I first as if you missed your childhood. Yes, and I had to... Because, like, my auntie tried to, like, make up for it. So I don't even have an excuse to be sad about it. Like, no, you I have an excuse. It, 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 I didn't have a mom. I didn't have a mom. It's okay. It's, it's what it is. It's like I'm ungrateful. No, 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 no. You're not ungrateful. You're ungrateful to her for stepping in. But it doesn't change the fact that you feel bad that your mother abandoned you at the month five. It, it's two different things. Because I don't want to suppress that feeling. What happened to you is a, real, is a fact. You didn't create it in your mind. You feel, you feel abandoned. Don't you feel that way? Yes. And how do you feel on a normal day when people talk about their mothers? How do you feel? You don't have no mother story. Yeah. And how does that make you feel? Very bad. And it has affected every area of my life. Even my friend. There was a time I wasn't talking to my friend here and I felt really bad because I felt like she left me. I, I tend to, you know, cling to my friends and people, I don't have a lot of friends. I can hear you. I don't have a lot of friends, so the ones I have, I tend to like rely on them. They're like my support system. So when they leave, it affects me really bad. And okay. So let me ask you, the way it's affecting you right now, by, your mom is trying to re reach you. You're not talking to her. Who is hurting more, you or her? It's me, I guess. It's you. You've always thought all your life that you're punishing her by not reaching to you. But you don't know that the unforgiveness is affecting you more than her. Is that not true? Yeah. How old is your mom? She should be... What? Maybe 40 or 39. 40, 40 or 39? Yeah. Can I ask your age? Is it okay to ask? Okay. Maybe 
early 40s. I, I really don't know. You don't I, really don't she know. She had me when she was young, like 20? Um, 20, yeah. And you are more than 20 right now? Yes. Let me, I want to step down. If you had a child at 20, how would he behave? I don't know, but I don't think I would leave my child. Let me tell you something. When your mother had you at 20, she was a child. I'm sure she left you out of fear. What is your name? What's your name? Juliet. If you get pregnant right now, what will happen to you? I'll be scared, yes, but... You'll be scared? Yeah. You may not leave because of you don't want what happened to you to happen to your child. Yes. But the truth is that even me I'm talking to you, if I get someone pregnant at 20, I could kill myself. <laughs> the reason why the kind of family I come from Mrs. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> That's my mother's name, Mrs. Christiana Mudupe Dou. <laughs> Christiana for short. <laughs> they turned off our family. If I, if, I can even see her, like I'm talking to you, I can see my mother. I, I can see her. Let me say something to you quickly. As you grow up, you realize that your parents were not as intelligent, as not as strong, as not as limited, unlimited as you thought they were. I, I don't know your mom, and I'm not trying to give excuses for her. But I just think most people that I know that got pregnant at 20 years old, they become devastated. This runaway is one more thing. Most people that you find that child somewhere on the dumb hill, most of them are from people that got pregnant very early. And the second thing, so, so the reason, so if you say you've not done this, I understand why you've not done because you've not, there's a pain. This pain you are feeling right now, in you taking the step, you will feel times 100. We've not even delved into what you felt. You're already crying. So, the reason why you're shying away is because this is why people don't heal emotionally. Because there's a pain they have to confront for them to be healed. And instead of them to confront the pain, they go around it. They just keep dancing around it. Just keep dancing. And that's why the scripture says, until you break yourself loose, you can't be free. I, I see you crying right now, but this is not the real tears. The day you resolve to talk to her, you will be shattered. But you'll be shattered, then you'll be healed. So the first step in getting healed is this. You need to ask yourself, I, I'm not done with you yet. The first question, what pain am I trying to avoid? I'm going to ask somebody else here. What pain am I trying to avoid? The second thing is that, what pleasure do I get by not solving it? Tell me, what pleasure do I get by not solving it? Nothing really. I can tell you, you can pretend as if there's nothing there. Is that not true? No, tell me. Is that not true? Yeah. You can pretend you, as if there's nothing there. You can pretend as if you're a normal girl that was not abandoned. You can pretend as if there was no story there. So when you see people not dealing with emotion, because you can hear this tomorrow, but for you to deal, this is, this is the point of healing. For you to be healed, this is where it gets powerful. He said, what is the pain I'm running from? What is the pleasure? The pleasure is that I was raped. The pain is that Everyone will know I was raped, so I will not talk about it. The pleasure is that I'll just be a normal girl and nobody knows anything. But inside, I'm dying of that bad experience. Juliet, it's a long journey, but I think you have to make the call sometime soon. It's your decision, but this is affecting you more than it's affecting her. Hold the microphone, Juliet. What will it mean to you to be in your mother's hands again? Number one, it will mean nothing because you never experienced it before that you can remember. Then number two, it will mean all the world because it's something you really want. True or false? Sure. Yeah, it's a mixture of I've never had it, but I really want it. You can't change the past, but you can create the future. You can't change the fact that your mother left you, but you can create a future that has your mother in it 
and your aunt in it and your father in it and move forward from there. And that void can gradually become filled. But that's what you can do. No one can do it for you. What do you think? Okay. Praise God. Is there someone else? Is there someone else that has something you've been pushing off and you don't want you pushing off? Because I just want to teach how to really heal and what is holding you from healing. Anybody? You, you have something? Okay, there's a lady over here that has something. Okay, there's a microphone here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. You can have your seat here. No, 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 you can't speak to, you have to tell me your own. Yeah, yeah, okay. You have to say your own, yeah. Life, I just want to say that life is too short because right now you have the opportunity to still meet with your mom. For me, my own case is that why she was, why she reached out, she wanted to speak to me, I was angry just like the way she was and unfortunately she died. She died and this is one of the, I'm not forgiving myself up to now and it still aches. So I'm just speaking, I'm, I just want to use my own experience that life is too short and you better speak to her. You better try to reach out to her now because... So how are you I, dealing with the fact that she died? It's still... It's, I don't know how to get over that. I don't know. Why do you need to get over that? Why do you need to get over it? Because I can't even forgive myself. Why do you need to forgive yourself? She reached out and I was just, I think I was just being childish. And the fact that, yes, I had a very, I was opportune to have a very nice stepmom. My stepmom was... You had a support system. Yes, she was. But it's not like the, that space was still there. Yeah. But she was there. And at some point she wanted me, just like the way so she this felt. So this is what I would say to you. I didn't want to feel ungrateful. I... So, it's not about feeling ungrateful. It's the fact that you are healing. Two different things. You know what I think you should do? Ask yourself, if my mom was alive today, what would she be telling me? What would she want me in connection with? Who your mother wants you to be in connection with right now? Anybody you know? I don't, I don't even know anything. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. You don't know. So the question is that, since you have a stepmom, she's still alive, right? Yeah. Build that relationship into her and renew it again, like you have been doing already. Yeah. You want to say something, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, something that is unresolved, yeah, that you're struggling to resolve. Oh, okay. So I went through shock that started affecting my health. So it started with, um, I started switching. So my mouth tilts to one side why well, don't i send the video yeah. yes <laughs> do, do you have that video yeah um, so, <laughs> so when you when you go to trauma you, you, you twitch yeah because i saw the video your, your face was bent i i didn't understand i was trying to yeah yeah so i went for um ECG. what led to the shock You can't say it on the microphone. Just give me a topic. Don't, don't say it. Just to, I got pregnant. I, no, no, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> it's I a lost... relationship, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it, it affected me, and the only thing I could think of is work. So even if I'm not getting paid enough, I just want to work. So I do my nine to five. I do another do you have work. A video, do you have a video of that twitching you sent me? <laughs> I can look for it. On my look for phone. it. Send it to this guy. I, I want him to play it because people don't understand what I'm talking about. It's really bad. When I saw her, yeah. she she couldn't talk like this because I remember the glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's even so. I had headache for one year. I didn't know. I I got used to having the headache. So what have so you not resolved? What what, what what have you not resolved right now? Okay, so I, I still want to work. <laughs> Want to work how? Yeah, so like I said, I had three jobs at a time. So I even work at night. And so what have you not resolved? It's still always thinking about preferring solutions. I just want to talk to my customers. I'm not at rest because... Um, no, no, no. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. What's making you do it? That's what I'm asking you. 
Because I don't want to think about the pain. What don't you want to think about? What pain? I don't want you to twitch right now. You're not going to twitch right now. You're going to talk to me. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't just want to remember. So let me tell you this. Whatever you tolerate to remain, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you tolerate to remain, whatever you don't confront will stay. How old are you? Um, I'm 31. How will it be when you're 40 like this? Okay, so... Um, no, no, no. Just answer my question. Don't tell me a story. At 40 years old, how will it be? So let me tell you something. A lot of you wonder why I break this. I hope you know that. So I said, Pastor doesn't allow them to talk. But I wonder why you say that because you don't even know what I'm doing. You know, you don't even know what I'm doing. The reason why is that when they're talking, they enter a pattern. And I'm trying to correct them out of it. There's a, there's a way they normally talk and take them somewhere. So I'm trying to bring them out. So when I say I'm going that way, I bring them back. Tell me, when you're 40, how will you be if you continue like this? Will your twitching stop or will have gotten worse? Okay, so sir, that's what I'm trying to say that for now, the twitching has stopped. Okay. You know, I told you that um, they prescribed this medication for me that um, for mad people, actually. So I want to ask you, so, so are you on that medication right now? No, 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 okay. no I'm not. I, cu I couldn't find it. The doctor said that she just, you know, prescribed that for me because she knows I wasn't going to find it, but I need to... You know, start having therapy sections and all that. And I don't so, have... So I want to ask you this. When you're 40, mm -hmm. you will need all of those things. So keep going, right? So I'm trying to say that I'm not on any medication yeah. right so now. So right now, what you're doing is that you're giving yourself over to work. Yes. Okay. So how will you get married? That's what I'm asking you at 40. I've, I've not even thought about that. I'm just... So at 40, you'll not be married? I will. You will? Magically, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> because in this state, who's going to marry you? When well, you don't think about nobody, then work. I want to ask you a question. Why are you afraid to confront the pain that this guy has left you? It's just too much. What's too much? Pastor, I faced humiliation I, I was humiliated and everything I worked for I lost everything I started afresh again really <laughs> why are you laughing I just showed you something. You can interrupt any pattern by changing the behavior. That's all. I did that so intentionally because all of you were falling to a pattern. Yes. See, she was crying, now she's laughing. So, so all of a sudden you say, I can't, I can't, I can't. As soon as you change your pattern, that's why in the Bible, you hear God say, give them a shout of joy. In the worst times. Because. I'm telling you. He said, you are going to this part too when they are stronger than you. God will say, oh yeah, start shouting. I'm only saying to you. That every time you think about that story. You can choose another response. Because you just said that story now with a smile. You know what? This story you said with a smile now. By the time you say it tomorrow, you will cry again. The reason is why. Guitarist, come. Where's the guitarist? Where's the guitarist? Tell him to come. Where's my guitarist? Where's the where's the where's this guy here? Who's playing this one? Are they on break? There's something I taught in the second and third service. Thank you, guitarist. I want to show you something. Because after the service, you're going to feel so good. Like Juliet, she's going to... Juliet, you feel fantastic right now, right? Give her the microphone. Do you feel fantastic, Juliet? Give her the microphone. 
You feel fantastic right now, right? Yes, I do. But it's going to last only for today. <laughs> the reason why, let me tell you why it's going to last for today. And that's why many of you, when you come for this emotional service, you get better than a week after. <laughs> this, is why, this is why that happens. All human beings are like strings. These are strings. These are strings. So you play, put on the microphone. So you play the guitar, right? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. What do you do every morning when you want to play the guitar? Hold the microphone. Uh. I have to tune the guitar again. Why do you have to tune the guitar? The reason why is that naturally the wires of the guitars relapse. You've been like this for 31 years. One teaching cannot change you. So it will relapse. So today now, what I'm doing in this session is that I'm tuning you. I'm tuning all of you. I'm tuning you like this. But by the time things happen tomorrow, next tomorrow, your wires will what? Relax again. What you must learn to do is to tune yourself. So before you play today, what did you do? What, tell me, you tune. I tune this one. Yeah. When you play tomorrow, what will you do again? I tune again. When you play this one, what do you do again? I tune again. The reason why is that the wires will naturally go back to default. You've been like this things that break up. You've always been crying, saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. So says you can do it. Say, yes, I can. But that lasts for today. What will make it permanent is that by yourself every morning, you will go back and tune yourself. How do you tune yourself? The things I said to you, say to yourself. You'll go back and watch the message on Harvest's TV. You'll go back and watch those missed messages again. And that's what some of you, you say, I was depressed. I came for the service. I was okay for three months. The reason why is that what was wrong with you was 10 years. I can't fix it by one teaching. You have to keep using your drugs. The word of God is a drug. So you go back and what? You go back and what? You tune it. Every morning you tune, you tune it until the point where it is perfectly amended. And only you know when that state happens in your life. One scripture that came to me as you spoke was 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And that's something you want to write down. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Put on the screen. Because you're like, I can't. Look at me. Let's see how you say I can't. Lady, I can't. I can't. Do like this, I can't. I can't. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm changing a pattern of our problem. I'm trying to laugh about our problem. It's a spiritual thing I'm doing. See so what the Bible says. Read, read, read with the microphone. You have the microphone. Read. You read. There has no temptation taking you, but such as is common. Such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Question, are you able? Or God is lying? I wanna, I'm just asking you, just, let me just say God is lying. That's it, that's a simple answer. So the reason why the temptation came to you was because you are able to overcome it, yes or no? Yes. So are you able or God is lying? I'm able. You're able. Is there a way of escape with the temptation right now? Yes. There's a way. That's why you're not dead after you've been through. But this thing, you see how you're smiling? Because I'm tuning you. But next tomorrow, when you see the guy on Instagram, you will not smile like this again. You have to go back and what? Tune yourself. You have to go back and what? Tune yourself. Praise God. I've been really blessed tonight. Why are you crying? You're laughing. Tears of joy. Praise God. Let's start up and pray. Oh, I scared all of you, right? <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, thank you for your word. We are grateful. I pray for everyone here that they will have the courage to face their pain and heal and take the steps that will help them. In Jesus' name we pray. All of you standing, let me give an assignment I want to bring next week. Write what pain you have to face to experience healing. Get the numbers of those on your roll. Fix it and bring it next week. Write the pain that you have to face that you are running away from to experience your healing. Next week I want to discuss it. Everybody on the roll, make sure you get their number so that we can do it together. You can have your seat. God bless you.